mean another one is uh, variance in uh, uh, in case of random variable but if you are dealing with the random process it happens to be sequence of random variable so that's where you will uh, have something more uh, interesting kind of parameter like one was mean function another was uh, uh, covariance function another was uh, uh, auto correlation auto covariance of those things so uh, we will try to estimate from the given uh, sample we will try to estimate it how to estimate those parameters so we will discuss in detail so one is mu function so starting phase is that we are having a random process x it is a sequence of random variable but here sequencing process that time index it may be uh, discrete or it may be continuous so it is something more than sequence also you can say that and that's where we i had given notation of this one some random process uh, you can always take various uh, notation of this one that it say that randomness is sources out from the outcome of the random experiment so omega so it would be each for each value of t xt would be function of omega and hence we jointly we can say that x is actually function of t and omega both here uh, omega is the source of randomness and t is talking about evolution so both are having very important role t and both argument t and omega having very important role in order in the process of defining random process and uh, we had already seen that mean function so better to relate with the corresponding random sample uh, we are putting a suffix x here and mean function it again happens to be function of time and there is no randomness because randomness will be exhausted uh, through the definition of mean function why because it is calling it is defined as an expectation of the random variable so that omega Omega things would be randomness so would be adjusted so that's why it would be just function of t and also we had seen the variance of a uh, random process and autocorrelation so those things uh, I am I'm recalling again so that we can talk about estimation of those things so coming to outline of today's lecture uh, first I would like to discuss about estimation of parameters uh, there are really interesting approach here. So here definitely you will ask question if you are going to estimate parameter How you will estimate parameter then uh, your simple answer is that you will have a uh, sample some sample you will have or some measurement of the uh, random process for few time frame you will have that uh, t you may uh, you may see that t may vary continuously or discreetly so it is not like that you know all the value of the random process for each t you don't know you may you may not know you just you will have sample like uh, uh, estimating mean and variance so just uh, that sample simply it is uh, talking about variation with respect to time so that's why we will say that we will have a time series data as, and from the time series data we try to come up with some estimate of the parameter of random process okay so time series data one approach in last class i had already mentioned that how we can uh, measure the time series data that you take a single simple simple pendulum and just uh, make it oscillate so and uh, during the discrete phase of time uh, with uh, each tick of the uh, clock try to measure um, um, angular velocity angular acceleration angular displacement all those are clean you can note down with the help of ticking the ticking of the clock okay the ticking of the clock that will talk about time or discrete that would be also discrete time frame and with respect to that you want to do that measurement for long time just it depends upon your convenience you have to take a sample so it is one kind of sampling approach what we say that okay and uh, through that we will come up with estimate of parameter after that uh, if time permit then we will discuss about uh, multiple random process as i had already mentioned that there is a requirement of multiple random process why because if you are having a control system then your input might be one random process and output would be another random process also so you need to know what is the relation between these two random process so what is the relation between output and input like observation output generally we are calling it observation input generally happens to be control uh, unit okay so if uh, both are random process is, uh, definitely if you input uh, a random process output would be also a random process so you need to measure so you are having a complete information about input and you will have some idea about the system concept like uh, what we call it in control system impulse response you will have idea of impulse response response based on that you can estimate your observation okay so that uh, in term of uh, 
random process that we will talk about so so in order to understand that uh, simple lti system that linear time invariant system you need to know multiple random process and uh, probably in next class we will discuss uh, start a new uh, form of random process that we are calling it uh, arrival process that will talk about uh, with uh, ticking time you will count a number of uh, arrival of uh, something like it will, if you are uh, uh, taking going to uh, supermarket then customer would be number of arrival if you are going to bank then again customer would be number of arrival if you are going to railway station then passenger number of passenger so those are what uh, arrival uh, it is uh, those are talking about arrival process so you can easily see that uh, that arrival of customer always happens to be random in nature not like that always fixed number of uh, customer would come in a particular slot so there would be always variability or there would be always a randomness so that's where we can measure those uh, we can study those arrival process with the help of uh, two simplest uh, uh, arrival process that one happens to be Bernoulli random process when we are dealing with a discrete time another happens to be Poisson random process when we are dealing with continuous time so those two are simplest arrival process then we will talk about other process later so coming to first part that it estimation of a uh, estimation of parameters of a random process so we will apply so simply at hand we will have sample and uh, the simplest sample form of sample in case of random process it happens to be time series data that what i told that so if you are having time series data then we need to introduce uh, averages with respect to time variability in time okay so average so time that average we are calling it time average so how we define we can see so those things okay so here we can define like this way so suppose we are having a random process xt again we uh, we are taking this notation this is the simplest notation and explicitly if you want to see then it a random process happens to be with two argument okay sometimes we need to estimate the parameter of a random process through measurement okay how we can estimate it so one simplest estimate is that uh, suppose you are willing to estimate mean function so uh, you measure the one process that uh, measures the value of a uh, random process for different outcome different out outcome is uh, okay and after that average it out for that n uh, sample size n you have taken here average out then you will get one estimate of the uh, mean function okay definitely it would be function of time this one is one approach okay but it would be a little bit complicated complicated since here uh, mean function it is a function of time we need to perform and repetition of the random experiment at this time to estimate uh, mean function there is another approach that uh, when we are having a a stationary random process as i have already mentioned that in case of a stationary random process if you are trying to find mean function of that process it happens to be constant okay so uh, if we, uh, that means time independent simply so in that case estimation of mean it would be very simpler and also the variance uh, the autocorrelation would be also function of the difference uh, if you are uh, trying to compute auto correlation at two different time t1 and t2 then that would be just function of difference between these two so that's way in that uh, that we call it invariance principle so due to that uh, the estimation becomes simple estimation of auto correlation becomes simple uh, in case of a stationary process so here just uh, this one is for any general random process now here we are just confined to a stationary process so in order to estimate parameter in a stationary process so we will come up with time series data and from there we will try to de define first time averages okay and through that we will try to estimate mean okay so what is meaning of time averages so in the definition of random process you had already seen that so if you are fixing outcome then you are getting realization of a random process simply we are calling it a sample function that means if you are fixing a outcome omega one then with respect to that you will get a realization of random process simply you can call it uh, t of omega one or simply also you can call it here omega one is now fixed so there is no more randomness here it involves because with respect to outcome omega one we have taken the random process so simply you can call it omega one is here fixed it is once given to you okay so it, it would be just a function of time and, and it will involve around uh, with respect to time so it will come like this way so it is just function of time and name of this one uh, you can call it sample function or you can call it realization of a 
uh, random process so they are sample path also you can call it there are various names so it is one realization of this, uh, this one okay so just get one realization of the random process and uh, from that realization uh, you see that uh, that sample path vary with respect to time so here time it is not possible to uh, measure the behavior of this sample path with respect to each time because you don't know the random process exactly so what you do just uh, you sample it out for few times sample it out for few times so anyone would like to highlight how to how do we sample from continuous uh, uh, how do we perform discrete sample for continuous uh, from given continuous signal anyone know how to uh, sample uh, from continuous signal that n number of samples from continuous signal anyone know any idea Either say yes or no, there is no issue if you don't know, I will explain it. Definitely it would be part of other courses that one interesting course is signal that signal and system. So everyone uh, might have, have, you, have you gone through that signal and system or not? Anyone? Yes. So, so you don't know how to sample uh, signal from continuous signal, given signal? How to sample from continuous signal? Do you know or not? All these actually, uh, these are practical problems. Simply, uh, if you are someone is saying that to model this problem, so uh, simply from continuous signal you can't proceed with. So what you have to do, you have to take uh, uh, n number of sample, n number of observations. So how you can take n number of observations from a continuous signal? So you have to perform sampling. So it is just directly coming from direct delta function. Direct delta function. It is you know that uh, uh, what is the property of direct delta function? everyone so if you multiply a function f f of t with direct delta function uh, centered at suppose centered at uh, s okay f. so what would be value of this one this integral suppose you are integrating from minus infinity to infinity it is one kind of convolution type uh, it is coming so anyone would like to highlight what would be value of this? Anyone? What would be the value of this? F, yeah, f of s or something else. Or what you can do, you can uh, also uh, play with this argument. You can play, play with, it is one kind of convolution. So it is talking about convolution. So you can write it like this way. Uh, what is the property of convolution it is talking about uh, symmetric so convolution uh, that uh, this uh, argument you can take either with delta or with uh, t there is no any uh, issue with convolution so you can write it like this way f of s minus t s minus t and delta t dt do you know all these properties do you know or not convolution is just symmetric so due to that so if you are saying that yeah so if you know this so what would be the situation in that case uh, uh, what would be the value of uh, this uh, integral from the property of direct delta what would be the value of this one just focus on here any idea just that's way one rightly you pointed out what would be the answer but uh, i just tricked it f of f of s it would be f of s okay very fine so here simply it would be what uh, f of s minus 0 because it is centered around 0 so that's why you might have already seen that it is centered around what s but here it is centered around here this uh, due to that uh, this uh, interchanging uh, behavior of uh, due to that symmetry uh, it would be s minus 0 so s minus 0 is what s so that's why again it would be f of s 
so you need to know how it is happening that uh, actually actual property of delta, delta is that it say that um, you have to see the center where it's centered around so with respect to that uh, uh, the corresponding uh, integral will take uh, value of the product function at that center center so that that one is coming so due to that it is coming okay so it's so the same concept uh, this will help to sample out to uh, con simply it is sample out to, uh, what you do here s is what s is a fixed number s is a fixed number whatever you can take you can take it xk you can say that it is xk that means suppose you, are, you want to sample so f of t is simply a continuous signal and xk is a fixed time it is a fixed time so if you suppose you are willing to sample at a fixed time xk then how you can sample it so by uh, con convoluting the corresponding signal continuous signal with uh, delta function that was that would that would be centered at the corresponding point xk so this is the sampling approach from continuous okay so and uh, if, if you are dealing with uh, discrete sample there is no issue to uh, uh, deal with here what you have to do uh, so you can convert this one that's <coughs> with uh, we know that integral is very much uh, uh, synonymous with uh, summation so you can replace it by summation you can re replace it by summation so the summation uh, convolution in term of summation convolution so that both kind of convolution i had already discussed uh, uh, during the uh, de derived distribution that means when you are summing two random variable they both happens to be discrete then uh, the distribution of sum of two discrete random variable is given by discrete convolution and distribution of sum of two continuous uh, random variable is, is given by um, continuous convolution so that uh, you know that uh, both uh, you can easily understand you can write it depends upon what signal you are having you can always come up with the sampling approach of the signal okay you can always do sampling through convolution with delta function where so delta function trying to uh, bring it uh, point wise sampling so that is the approach so this through this you can do sampling so uh, explore a lot it is not part of this course so i won't go much in detail so this would be part of signal and system because every time you have to proceed with two, two kind of uh, signal either discrete or continuous so you need to know how to sample it so that's why all these are part of the, that course you can recall it again so here simply i am saying that we are having uh, at this time call it t1 t2 during this uh, these are the uh, sampled time frame or sample instant simply we can say that t3 and okay tn you can go up to tn or capital t up to capital t also you can say that so these are the uh, uh, time frame at which we are trying to sample the corresponding time uh, random process and hence we are getting a time series data so with respect to that time series data we are defining a time average power interval uh, 2t okay so time average one time average we are defining from the continuous perspective okay continuous perspective continuously if you are observing the value of random perspective and then time process uh, the time average we are defining like this way this is the time average so it is defining with respect to integral otherwise just we are having discrete sample then we just we will convert this one by corresponding summation okay by so here you can see that we are taking integration with respect to time so this one is averaging with respect to time so it is a, this average we are calling it time average notation is like this way so we will talk about this time average it will it is just remember that it is with respect to one particular realization of the random process so that's where just you are dealing with a time series data here it is in continuum fashion okay and it will estimate the mean so here uh, so that estimation process or uh, convergence of this time series uh, uh, average time average uh, will call it uh, uh, mean ergo ergodicity okay how it is coming so it is coming like this way okay so suppose we are taking a discrete time uh, random process uh, xn and it is a stationary and we are performing a sampling and through that we are getting iid discrete time uh, process iid independent independent and identically distri distributed okay uh, discrete time process with which is having a mean mu that we don't know 
okay and then by applying law of large number or we can easily claim that if you are summing the iid xi id sample okay uh, i varies from 1 to capital n 1 to so simply it is a one time series data and from there you can easily define the sample mean it is once this is the sample mean i varies from 1 to capital n and it will converge to true mean of the statistical process in almost sure way so we know that what is the meaning of almost sure way that that means probability that limiting value of this sample mean is equal to true mean is one so this is the almost uh, sure way definitely it is convergence probability but it is in a very strong way so it is law of large number alternate, alternate a strong law of large number simply we say that okay now we consider a random process uh, x t equal to a it is a uh, a it may be a random variable so what kind of random variable it is so uh, here we don't observe evolution it is one kind of we can say that with respect to time it is constant it is not varying it remains constant so uh, here a is what it is a zero mean random process so mean of a is zero and uh, uh, then easily we can say that this if zero is a but constant number so easily we can say that xt is a stressive process so if you are willing to find mean function automatically by default mean of a is zero so by default mean of uh, mean function of this random process would be also zero and if you are willing to find uh, time time average so time average here uh, what we do we need to integrate from minus t to t and uh, uh, in this uh, random process and you have to divide by 1 by t to uh, 2 by t so, and the value is what equal to a so easily we can say that in case in this case uh, this one is not converging to zero it is not converging to zero so uh, we have to be very much careful it is definitely a is not converging to zero you can you can time this here in this case time average is not converging to zero so we have to be very much a specific what kind of random process we have to take so that we have to be focus on that so uh, simply if you talk about uh, ergo dct what does it characterize it characterize that convergence is probability of the time average to uh, ensemble mean mu that true mean mu for a random process so if you are taking a mm, random process which is a wide sense stationary wide wss wide is a sense stationary random process okay and with mean mu and xt is mean ergodic so mean ergodic is what what how we define it we define we say that uh, the time average taken from uh, time series data it will converge to true mean in probability so what is meaning of true mean probability when t is approaching to infinity so true mean probability simply it say that uh, the convergent in probability it say that uh, if you are willing to find expectation of time average with respect to a given time series data okay so we find uh, expectation if you are just uh, apply the expectation approach in the definition of uh, time average and just we know that expectation is very much compatible with the uh, integral so you can take uh, this one is definitely a continuous function of time so you can take it inside the integral and if you are taking inside the integral and we know that uh, the given random process we are taking assumption that it is a wss that means uh, wide sense uh, stationary so uh, simply a stationary it say that mean would be a constant mean of the random process would be constant so here sim simply it would be mu so mu will come out and if you integrate finally you are getting mu so easily we can say that the time series uh, time from the given time series what time average you had already defined that one is having mean mu true mean mu so you can say that uh, uh, this uh, time average it happens to be an unbiased estimator of uh, mean true mean of the uh, stationary process unbiased estimator why because estimation of this one is equal to mu that's why that is that concept of being as unbiased estimator mean so we able to find mean of the time series okay so later we will try to establish the uh, convergence in probability so how we establish uh, and this convergence in probability it is very simple that uh, uh, if you just uh, play with the definition of time series you will see that and uh, there is one equivalent re relation it say that if you are willing to find uh, limiting value of uh, expectation expectation of the difference between these two uh, 
uh, a square of difference between these two okay so simply it would what what does it call so sim if i talk about uh, this quantity what does it call anyone would like to recall what would be this if you are able to see this one from the definition of uh, one a specific parameter what does it talk about anyone we got the mean of time average and what does it talk about it is the asymptotic nature of variance of time average it is just definition of variance of time average so this is the quantity that you are able to compute it from the given time series data so this one is variance variance how we define it variance we define it that uh, we have to deviate the given random process uh, by uh, mean of that uh, uh, random variable by mean of that random variable and mean of the random variable uh, is here mu so that's way uh, here we are deviating after that we are doing a squaring so you can say that uh, this one is one kind of random variable so you can call it x and uh, and this quantity is mu is the mean of x simply you can say that and after that you are uh, 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 after deviation you do a squaring and after that you are taking expectation so this is a, actually what it is definition of the variance so here you can say that uh, the asymptotic nature of the variance of uh, time average it is converging to zero it is converging when t is approaching to infinity it is converging to zero and uh, equivalently you can say that there is just very interesting result you can say that uh, this this is also talking about the same convergence uh, here but remember that here we are, we are dealing with uh, auto correlation terms auto correlation term is coming so i won't go to prove this result uh, if you are willing to see you can see itself my intention is to talk about estimation of the uh, this variance uh, 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 this correlation auto correlation and auto variance so we are going to talk about few example here so uh, simply we will talk about uh, auto correlation we are talking about uh, uh, estimation of auto correlation okay so auto correlation we are talking about auto, auto correlation for a specific uh, random process ss uh, that um, a stationary random process or simply we can take either wss or uh, uh, s triple s that means uh, uh, weak sense uh, stationary or a strong sense stationary it depends upon which one in both cases we know that uh, mean uh, function would be constant it would be constant just uh, difference in, in these weaker sense it, it is talking about convergence weak convergence and a strong sense is talking about uh, a strong convergence that is the convergence difference otherwise uh, these two things that con constant mean and uh, the auto correlation or, or auto covariance uh, at two uh, time instant t1 t2 it would be just function of difference between these two so simply i would like to write it it is function of t2 minus t1 or t1 minus t2 it depends upon which time you sample first in order wise okay. so simply you can write it like this way it is function of here you observe there are two argument here you observe only one argument so that is the difference so you can simply call it tau so we will try, try to uh, we have already seen that uh, how to estimate mu by time average and that convergence is guaranteed from convergence in probability that we had already seen that and uh, uh, if you are willing to establish this convergence the same criteria they prove concept what we had already discussed for a strong convergence you can apply it for better understanding and uh, we will talk about here uh, how to estimate autocorrelation again using time average so autocorrelation as a temporal average over a given interval uh, of length 2t uh, we can define uh, a second order realization as follows so that means we we are first defining this time average as a second order why what is meaning of second order because it is uh, one kind of expectation of product of two random variable that's a second order moment it, you can say that it is second order moment uh, so here uh, we are talking about realization we are taking one sample function uh, with respect to that sample function only time will vary so we will try to define a time average of this uh, second moment uh, like this second moment easily you can see that as so here uh, just uh, it is what we will again claim that it is a, a very good estimator of 
uh, it is a very good estimator of uh, autocorrelation. So again, ergo, ergodicity characterizes it uh, convergent probability of time average to uh, ensemble uh, that autocorrelation uh, that happens to be just function of the difference between two for a random process. So again, we are taking XT happens to be a wide sense stationary process with a constant mean mu and XT it would be mean ergodic if we say that the uh, this uh, uh, what sample uh, uh, autocorrelation what we have already defined as a time average from the given time series data so it will converge in probability to uh, true cross correlation okay when uh, t is approaching to infinity so uh, so simply your question would be here so if you're talking about convergence of uh, this uh, time average uh, of cross correlation uh, thanks to one uh, time series data uh, to this autocorrelation uh, so how we can talk about convergence how we can relate it with the uh, weak law of large number okay so we can relate it we know then in weak law of large number we need to talk about this would be what it would be mean of this uh, sample quantity so we are trying to find mean of this sample quantity or estimated quantity uh, or you can call it uh, sample autocorrelation if you are willing to find mean so we are finding mean and the, again i would like to say that this uh, expectation operator it is just compatible with uh, integral so you can take it inside because of continuous continuous nature of uh, this uh, realization of time uh, uh, random process with respect to time you can take it inside and after taking inside what will happen just find the mean and we know that uh, the corresponding random process it happens to be weak sense stationary so that's where this quantity would be fixed it would be mean and this would be also fixed okay uh, uh, so simply it is the expectation of product of uh, these two are coming so what does it talk about if you try to see what does it talk about it is talking about actually uh, autocorrelation of xt it is what directly we have taken we are not breaking and uh, we can break further into mu if a condition is given that uh, for each time these two would be uh, independent but independency we are not taking it we haven't taken independency so that time we can bifurcate that for independent random variable we know that uh, expectation of product of two random variable happens to be product of corresponding expectation so here we are not taking independent uh, independence that's why we will not break this further just we will confine uh, into expectation of product of uh, x and y okay this one is possible when x or y are independent okay so that that we had already discussed okay so here we haven't taken that condition independency condition so that's where we will find expectation of product of these two quantity okay and what does it talk about it is actually definition of uh, autocorrelation so that's where we are substituting this with the definition of autocorrelation and we know that uh, here this random process is uh, weak uh, simply i would like to say that it is a process so it would be just function of tau that means it would be independent of t simply so it will come out of the integral and just you because uh, integrate this quantity from minus t to t so integral of this quantity would be one and and hence one times this uh, autocorrelation function so we can see that mean of this uh, time average of autocorrelation that coming from uh, temporal data or time series data it is equal to uh, true autocorrelation so that's way we can talk about uh, convergence of this uh, quantity in probability to this one using weak law of large number so i have already discussed about proof of this one and various applications so you can treat this convergence as an application of weak law of large numbers so now we will talk about uh, uh, again uh, estimation of uh, autocorrelation as a temporal average of uh, product of these two okay so here it is also very easy how uh, it is yes it is very easy in sense that uh, we had already seen the relation between autocorrelation and autocovariance what was the relation relation was it is coming like this way uh, relation is coming like this way auto covariance it, it is actually the difference between auto 
auto covariance it is the difference between auto correlation and the product of the corresponding mean corresponding time okay this derivation we we know that we had already seen that it is a difference between auto correlation and product of the mean at time t1 and at time t2 but we remember that here uh, we have taken a stationary process and the mean these two mean would be constant so it is meaningless to discuss uh, this part of quantity because it is time independent it is just these two are constant so that's why simply you can say that uh, if you are able to estimate uh, uh, this uh, quantity you can easily estimate this quantity so that's why the same convergence uh, it, it would be implied uh, from the convergence of this quantity so we are talking about convergence when that uh, uh, t is approaching to infinity okay so that we will talk about convergence so here uh, it would be just uh, constant with respect to t so that's where it is not affecting convergence of uh, autocorrelation convergence of autocorrelation is directly implied from the convergence of autocorrelation okay so that's where it is very easy so same concept i have already borrowed it from auto correlation regarding uh, auto covariance so here, here you need to define again uh, time average for auto correlation in the similar in the similar perspective you have to, you can define so we have taken here mu constant so here just play with uh, uh, this uh, time average and just uh, uh, take a a stationary process with uh, constant mean mu and uh, suppose it is mean ergodic then easily we can say that uh, the corresponding uh, sample or temporal or time average there are various names you can say that Te temporal or time average uh, autocorrelation it will converge to uh, it will converge to true autocorrelation so convergence you can see all these uh, in the similar similar framework it is convergence is coming to you